Well, top of the morning to you, laddies and lassies, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogboat333, and welcome back to Arts of Iron Foil, the new order, last days of Europe as the Republic of Ira. So, last video, um, the Belfast Parliament Building, whatever that was called, uh, got kind of bombed to shit. And so, we're trying to figure out who to raid. We're also working on, uh, Opening things up to the uh, Yanks, seeing if they want to go ahead and invest in us a little bit. Uh, probably get working on the rest of this as well. Try to go down the rest of his path. Maybe a few of these as we kind of work down a little bit more. Might eventually do th might do this next, but but if we have enough political power. Might want to get working on the finance bill sooner rather than later. But right now we're just working on building up some political power. Table silent, Dory's declaration. Well, that's all well and good, but we know next to nothing about the ICG. We, we don't know who the leader is, where they operate, or who they even are. As much as we can sit here and say, oh, let's go and raid the ICG. We don't even know where to hit. The room mulled over that thought for a moment. Uh, actually, sir, that, that might not be true. Explain. Well, sir, we need, received an anonymous tip this morning sometime between the attack on the Parliament building and the attack on the Doherty household. The tip alleges there is a hidden ICG safe house within Belfast in a warehouse down at the docks of Belfast near the Twin West Silos. Allegedly, the tipster had been seen in what he called shady fellows going in and out of the warehouse late last night wearing ICG colors, bringing in packages of something he wasn't quite sure what. I didn't bring it up early because it didn't seem very accurate to a warehouse within the city. But after the two attacks, it's more than likely the, the person who was called in was onto something. Doherty and Flanagan glanced at each other. A hidden warehouse down by the docks full of shady people sounded awfully familiar to the both of them. Could it be the same warehouse that had seen Neil Blaney and Brigadier General Kelly walk into? I think the tip might be accurate. The commissioner hummed thoughtfully. <sighs> well, it's a better lead than nothing. Doherty, take a team down to the docks and check the out that son of a bitch. We'll crack her open and see what's inside. Doherty didn't hesitate for a moment to give a response. Yes, sir. Zapata inaugurated in Chile. Interesting. So a Lib Dem fella, or is that? I don't think that's who they elected. Spectre Doherty lined upside the ICG's warehouse with Flanagan and a number of other Garda officers. Suspicion had been correct. It's been the same warehouse he'd seen Neil Blaney and Brigadier General Kelly sneak into. Everyone gets ready. We have no idea what kind of opposition we'll find in there, so be prepared for anything. With that being Spectre kicking the door. This is the Garda! Everyone put your hands up! The Inspector of Proclamation was met with silence. Doherty and the other guard officers filed in through the doors, pistols drawn. Over to one side near a pair of large bay doors, Doherty spotted a car that he had seen outside of his house when I was attacked. Around him, the guard inspectors proceeded through the empty warehouse. Inspector? I think I've got something. Doherty walked over to the officer. Underneath the top was a crate filled with guns. Jesus. LAGs, personal radios, body armor, a ton of ammunition, Inspector. This is military-grade equipment, and a lot of it. How on earth did the ICG get their hands on all of it? We should have heard about an incident large enough for them to stockpile this much equipment. From across the building, another officer shouted, Inspector, you'd better come and see this. Doherty made his way across the warehouse in a small side room, likely a manager's office. Inside were various documents, maps of Dublin, of the countryside, attack orders to be relayed. Doherty paled as he realized the implications spelled out by the documents in front of him. They were incomplete, likely whoever wrote them fled before they could be finished, but what lay in front of him could not be denied. He took a deep, shuddering breath. <sighs> 
The citizen's guard isn't done. These are plans to take over Dublin. Well, blimey. This is all escalating quickly. Working on social building construction a little bit, so let's do that. So this is escalating pretty quickly. Inspector Eamon Doherty, much of a shock to the entire department, had decided to go on vacation <sighs> to Dublin, he explained. I'm going to take my family with me, stay, out of, stay with my daughter and her husband. It would be nice to get out of Belfast while things calm down. This fellow officers of the guard were understanding, as having holes blown into your house would make anyone want to get out of town for a bit. The commissioner had gladly signed off on the request. The Spectre hadn't taken significant time off in years. He already knew how important his job was. The Republic of Ireland, he thought, would always be more important than any of his personal desires. He already wouldn't be confronting any of those conflicting desires on this vacation, however. In truth, the department had good reason to be skeptical. While the inspector really would be staying with his daughter in Dublin for a time, it was not an end in and of itself. Instead, it provided a convenient alibi for his true task of a cap in the capital, a meeting with a to toysuk. Pulling up to the side of the road of the government building, the inspector made his way through security, showing the armed security guard a ticket of entry. If anyone asked me, the inspector was taking a tour of the building, though in reality he was making his way towards a meeting with Sean Lamass. Inside, a little-used side office sat the man alone. He nodded to Doherty as the inspector shut the door behind him. I'm risking a lot meeting you with you like this, but I trust the commissioner not to jerk me around. I told you had information for me. Doherty sat down in an empty chair. I apologize for the secrecy, but I had reason to believe that the ICG has been infiltrated. The highest echelons of the government. Lamas narrowed his eyes. And why is that, inspector? Doherty's voice was even. Neil Blani is in league with the ICG. Damn, that would have been a... Oh, fuck. God damn it. That's just what we need. The IRA attacking us. I thought you cunts were supposed to be stopping this. What are you doing? Got a wink towards the Americans. Let's check out the finance bill. Money keeps the world... Money makes the world keep turning, at least as far as the Americans are concerned. The more they can keep, the more enthusiastic they'll be to spend ridiculous amounts on our industries and goods. Thus it falls on us to lure in the fish so they end up biting the hook. Like anyone involved with, e with investment, the easiest way to learn an American is to promise less taxes for them being out, be for them being out from out of the country. Blah, yeah, I messed that up. The act specifics will need to be sorted out, but we still want a to make a profit out of this. But with some luck, we might be sitting on top of a proverbial gold mine of wannabe tycoons and entrepreneurs, some serious investors as well, even. So how are we doing this off the bat? Two hardliners, three De Valerists. It's probably not the bad. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to radicalize it a little bit. I remember when those things came out. Oh, I think it's a normal guy. I remember when these things came out. I heard the shipyard workers down at Hog Island making sal. Saddled with Italian bread and various other things inside. I started eating them at my construction site and I tried one. You can see why they like it. Ogie's still a dumb name, though. I suppose it is, Ambassador. Though I'm sur sure a sandwich such as this would catch on wherever it was invented. Now, shall we talk about what I'd l like you to know? Let's see. You invite the American Ambassador for lunch and you give him some of his regional food after hardly speaking to him for years. So it's obvious you want to get on his good side, is that right? Well, Mass nodded. 
It's obvious our relationship with Germany has not been for the better, economically speaking. We're interested in loosening our binds to them, improving economic ties to America. But to do that, we have, have to get some of the restrictions on the packed countries removed or lessened for us. So, we're talking about the neutralization of a member of the pack. then. That might be worth the effort, then. I'll tell the president to get some moves behind the scenes to get what you want. Should have enough wheels, grease, and the RDs to get things rolling. Wait, do you mean bribery? <laughs> of course not. I did enough fundraising for them. They owe me one. Making John Kennedy's career. Giving them the $100 fundraising dinners. They'll se see the sense in helping me out on this. There's a more recent sandwich from Philly's Popular, too. You ever hear of a cheesesteak? I guess politics is dirty the world over. But, if it works out for us... That should do. Um, how are the elections going over in America? I'm curious. Looks like they got civil rights. Independence for Algeria. Uh, domestic support is a little concerning. Well, they've taken Windhoek. That has to be nice. The Boers are still kind of whooping ass. That's neither here nor there, I think. Oh, blimey. Um, let me load the autosave. I got a little distracted, I forgot. Oh yeah, we gotta... The bill at, bills actually passed kinda quick. Um, so let's see... Let's try to get... Just need one more. The NIC won't like that. Let's get... That going. Change for the better, slightly empower the right wing, business taxes will decrease, GDP growth increases, poverty rate begins to improve. That's not bad. We can hire Disney, clear our name, and then probably go for the tariff bill. Finance bill, let's go ahead and hire Disney. Let nobody say that the Irish did not come far, despite our humble origins. For amongst the many thousands of Irishmen who left our fair nation during our times, the descendants of one immigrant will go on to become one of the most recognizable faces on earth. Walt Disney, a veritable Leonidas of the film industry and theme parks, is remarkably proud of his heritage. We plan to use that and promise him some payment to convince him to brighten our, uh, our image across the Atlantic. Mostly propaganda, to be quite blunt, but perhaps some cartoons show Ireland a positive light as well. The end result is what matters, and Disney could make or break our public relationships with the OFN. We'll utterly try most strenuously to convince them. Damn. Brazil withdraws. From the OFN, or the South African War. Meanwhile... Is that the Communists? That- Oh, Che is in charge of Paraguay, okay. Word. Uh, Brazil is Quadros, which is interesting to see.
Right, yeah, they had this whole fucking uh, table thing, which is cool as hell. Let's do industry management a little bit. Get that going. Yeah. Hire Disney. Let's go ahead and clear our name a little bit. Ireland has, in certain circles, acquired a somewhat fell reputation for our association with German Reich, and not an entirely undeserved one. Facts are facts, after all, and despite being pressured into it, we did end up siding with Germany. Much of a detritement of Germany. Of Britain. We can't make this va vanish, so instead we must seek to put our choices down to the mistakes of prior politicians, not the New Ireland who seeks ties with our American brethren, both business and personal. Perhaps one day these non-collaborative Englishmen may even dare to look at us fondly once again, but in truth we respect that particular train has long ago left the station. I mean, the English and Ir Irish getting along is a fever dream even for... even in real life, so... This timeline's probably fucked, isn't it? The show begins with sun rising on the waves under Hook Lighthouse. As the opening theme plays in the background, the camera shows scenes of downtown Dublin, an overhead view of the hedgerows of Ca in County Limerick, the empty expanses of Sli Slive Aldi Bog. Dry, good to see you. Welcome back, bud. Uh, the remnants of Tintern Abbey and the ends with mountainous wilderness of Killerney. To the morning, sun fully broke in overhead. Narrator tells the viewer the land of Ireland is an extremely beautiful and wondrous place, but then he rhetorically asks about the people who live there. The show goes back in time where a young cartoon St. Patrick is snatched away by a group of swarthy pirates who take him to Ireland. There is a shepherd, he and his lambs are constantly threatened by evil snakes until he's saved by a local girl. She teaches him the song of the Magic Isle, which is the show's main musical number. With her help, Patrick escapes the island, then later returns and chases the snakes into the sea. This is followed by segments focusing on the medieval monks, writing illuminated manuscripts, and a short humor segment on Irish folk music provided by Irish American folk group the Clancy Brothers. Now the program switches back to the present day live action. Some animated 1800s Dublin fades into the modern real city. The next segment takes a year into the factories of Ireland as the narrator tells us that Ireland is no longer the agrarian landscape it was in the past. The last few minutes are focused on the various research activities going on in the many fields in Ireland's colleges and institutes. Then we get more shots of the landscape as a chorus sings the Song of the Magic Isle to close the program. So concludes Disney's new mixed-media short, The Ma Isle of Magic. The private screening from the higher-ups in Ireland is warmly received with a standing ovation. Many are happy about the prospect of this program being shown in, on screens around the world. But there's only one voice in the room that matters. And Prime Minister Sean Lamass is an enthusiastic yes. Disney really does make everything better. I don't know about that, but sure. Uh, things are still falling apart in Germany a wee bit. Um, not much action going on there. Um, well, they're kind of doing pretty well in, um, South Africa. They still need to beat back the Boers, but other than that, that could be worse. I'm curious who's going to be inaugurated. Still got, uh, Mr. McCormick over there. Who, uh, new profile pick, as uh, new pr uh, leader pick is pretty interesting profile pick. Okay, we got the political power. Let's do the Tariff Commission repeal bill. The OFN are at the present time still technically under heavy tariffs from days of our affiliation with the German Reich on the international stage. If we are to pursue an alliance with them, this simply will not do. Consequently, the Tariff Commission repeal bill has been put into vote. Simplest of explanations, the bill is mainly concerned with eliminating the tariffs opposed on non-German source goods. Not officially mentioning the OFN, of course, but allowing them to take benefit of the Reich's legislation's effects. Saw to fly under the Reich's nose for a little while, giving Americans time to establish a more firm foothold. 
Well, what do we got here? I'll give us one. So we'll let, yeah, 92 for the bare minimum. Encourage there. I think we'll have enough time to get 30 and encourage the Day Valerists. Oh, Wallace Bennett, okay. A hardliner denounces us. Unfortunate, but as long as we got that going. Yeah, we're uh, one over, so we can afford to lose one more. Still be in the clear. There goes, um, Italian East Af Africa. Which I was curious to see. Um, I remember there was a teaser for East Africa a while back that had, like, um, Corentia or something like that, like, a um, Rhodesia-esque state here in Mogadishu, I want to say, or maybe it was here. And just a couple other things, like the, uh, the Black Lion Brigade. I don't know exactly. It seemed pretty interesting, though. There we go. GDP growth increases. Poverty rate decreases. What's our poverty? I think it was like 45% when we started. And it is... Or maybe it was just 42. Either way, it's going down at a very nice rate. And I'm very happy with it. Um... We must stand tall. Then we'll go down to the fence bill, packed observer bill, that and that. The Irish military at the present time is a proud and dignified force staffed with loyal and valiant soldiers who might have been lucky to feed a force from the 19th century. Ireland does not have many men, much wealth, or much in the way of advanced we equipment, not from Germany. This is worse than being a security risk. It makes us look weak to the Americans, and if they think they, us weaking, weaklings, they will dismiss us as a potential ally. We'll need to build up our forces somewhat. We have the men, after all, just not the capacity to best utilize them at the present time. More poignantly, any future exercise can finally take into account the possibility of a German foe. There we go. And we're still kind of defunding the army a fair bit, but in theory we could up it a little bit more. So there we go. Uh, looking decent for... Uh, maybe not decent for Ethiopia. I don't know if that's an encirclement or not. Is that... Yeah, they did lose their capital. <sighs> a bit nutty, though, isn't it? Nobody's got a clue who they are. My nephew even tried to join them, but couldn't even figure out where to go to get recruited. Said Duff before taking a loud drink of, long drink of a stout. That's because the citizens guard aren't like the other militias, Duffy. See, what I've heard is that the German Special Forces train these boys from birth. There's only a half a dozen of them all across the island, but each of them's worth a bloody army on their own. Ah, Tosh. Dismissed Rune. Singing a cigarette at, at in the table's ashtray. Germans haven't got nothing to do with it. See, ten years ago, a proddy son of a bitch murdered a Belfast boy's wife. Lad went nuts in anger. Mad with anger. Resolved himself to kill every wannabe Anglo on the island for what they'd done to him. He's been building up a cabal of roofs to kill us ever since. <sighs> Ridiculous. I didn't think it was my place to say, but I know the truth of where the citizens of God come from. You can't breathe a word of it to nobody, boys. The other two men leaned in to hear the table, which made a disturbing amount of sense to their inebriated minds. The tale of the citizens of God started in 108 AD, when the 9th Legion disappeared north of Hadrian's Wall. <laughs> okay, sure. And who is it? It's it's fucking um Neil Blaney. Just some fucking guy. 
ruling the guard, I think. I don't know how it exactly works, but that's kind of wacky. It's like finding out that fucking Sarah Palin w was the head of the KKK or something. I don't know. I don't know the analogy. You don't believe it! Either way. I mean, do you have Palin? You probably don't believe with Palin. You don't believe with Palin. Um, do we have the political power to pull this off? I don't know if we do. So let's do RTE History Broadcast. The one advantage that we have in this fight against the national malaise is that we can get everyone's attention. Sure, we can put up posters or billboards to ignore, blast slogans from bands to prepare for people not to listen to, but we have something else that's better. Because... In Ireland, we at least have a radio, if not a television. Everyone in Ireland has at least a radio, if not a television set. And we have RTE, our national broadcaster. Soon, a new programming schedule will be put in place, one which will put an emphasis on historical dramas, documentaries, and programmings, with more of an emphasis on our triumphs and challenges. Viewer viewers and listeners were tuning. You get a great, uh, the subtle hint about Ireland being a great country, with achievements of every sort. And that idea is going to lift them up from the gutter they find themselves in. Hopefully. Maybe. Let's do military construction, get that boost towards, um, prisons. Let's get some expansion to industry. There's not much of a presence in their economy. The Battle of Asuncion... Um, so I'll be interested. Ooh, there's a different guy in there. The little jacket. The red cardillo. Hmm. Oh, Tom squinting, that's not much of a surprise. Seeing the PRC actually win might have been kind of interesting, but I had some my doubts that would happen. Here's my question, are they going to go north and take any of this stuff up there? So Vyak is going to war with them. Maybe not. Let's do the defense bill. The defense bill, or rather the amendment to the original defense act, is a multifaceted piece of legislation which will... Well, amongst the other things, increase our military budget to require a level outlined by the OFN. No, they change a PRC super event. Do they change any others? I do not know that, actually. I'm usually more on top of my patch notes and what they change, but I don't know that. Um, while it's a drastic measure, we cannot defeat the Germans or even reliably delay them long enough for our aid to arrive at the present moment with our present forces. Well, it's not a kind place. It's not a generous place. We show weakness, the Reich will pounce, and so it falls upon us to ensure Ireland looks like a foe not worth extending the men and money on defeating. Regardless of whether or not that's actually the case. Encourage them. Encourage them. That should get us through, right? Jellicoe elected Prime Minister? Fun. Oh, okay, so they do expand up and take that. Okay, that's good to know. They have nothing in the way of monies, but uh, that's okay. We got the Modernists. Probably my fourth favorite faction in Tomsk. Ooh, did our credit, credit rating just go up? Never understood why Finland is green in TNO. I believe it is to make it easier to figure out uh, the lakes and move through those. As well as Vyatka is also green. And I guess it makes more sense for Vyatka to be green than anyone else. So, Because no one in here is white. I guess it's the Siberia is, but that's... Finland white kind of isn't the closest. Wait, actually, that makes it more complicated. Why is it green then if that's I don't know free production units let's get more towards uh, constructing 
And our economy is improving. You love to see it. But one thing you hate to see is when you run out of time. But at last we have is green for grass. Uh, Xeem DM in Finland fight is rare. Right. I don't think it's even coded in to happen, actually. Anyhow. Oh, we got a cut of here, folks. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, hit the sub button for more uploads every weekday, as well as occasionally Saturdays. If you have any comments, feedback, and surname, certainly leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get and appreciate any old feedback you might have for me. If you want to chat play games of any sort, check out my Discord. If you want to send me facts more every month, check out my Patreon. If you want to see me do a stuff live, I've check out my Twitch, all which are in the description box below. That's it for now, folks. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.